On today's episode, I'm going to teach you some ninja tricks for image editing, which will turn you into a web design pro. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, what is up? My name is Ron Segal. Welcome back to the free web design course. Today, we're going to dive into image editing, which is something that's crucial because every website basically that you're going to design is going to have some kind of images. So you need to know how to work with images. Now, I'll be working with Photoshop today and teaching you some tricks and tips. Now, you don't have to work with Photoshop because there's a lot of other alternatives uh, out there. Some of them are free. Some of them are great. I just love Photoshop. But whatever I'm going to teach you here on today's video, it's going to be applicable because at the end of the day, all of these image editing softwares have basically the same tool and the same logic to them. So let's dive into it and I'll, I'll kind of show you what I want to do. So let's say I'm, I'm working on Nike's shoe website for some kind. And I got this image from, you know, the client. This is the shoe that they want to present on the website. I want to create kind of a composition like this on some colorful background that's going to leave me some, you know, some uh, area here, a clean area that I can put some text on and the navigation and all of that stuff. So the first thing that I'll want to do, which is key to a lot of image editing is selection. I'm going to have to learn how to pick and cut this shoe right out of this clean background of the photo shoot so I can place it here. Um, so this is my background. Let's let's create some kind of a gradient here. So usually I'll just pick color here. Um, and then by clicking Alt, you can see I pick the red one here. I'm going to try some darker one from this area. So now I have basically two colors. Now the great thing about this, now I can go ahead and create a gradient. I'll create a circular gradient. No, I want this to be the other way around. So I'm going to undo this. I'm going to click X, which switches them around. Yeah, because now this looks better because there is the lighter area here and darker area in the back kind of looks like this maybe we'll add, adjust this later on so I have the background and I want to place the shoe on top of it so how am I going to select the shoe out of it there's all kind of this uh, magic one or uh, tools that are supposed to make this quick but the truth is if you want to make a great accurate job you're gonna to have to learn to work with the pen tool now to make my life easier, I like to click F to kind of full size this and then zoom in on this. Now, the way the pen tool works, I don't know if you've worked with vector tools in the past. Basically, you create some dots and then the next dot and you basically pull this over to get this kind of a line. Now, here's so this is how you do it. And the, the idea here is that you're going to try to trace down the edges of this object. Now, this is a tool, one of the most powerful tools um, that you'll want to learn to master as a designer in general. Now, note one of the tricks that I love doing is when I'll kind of do this and I'll hold down the option key so that I can move down this little edge, which kind of determines where the next, you know, I need to fix this up right now. So you can see I need to fit the blue line around the edges. Now, this is a tool that actually takes some skills to master press the uh, space bar to kind of move the image around. And it's easier to do when you zoom in, you have more resolution because you, you basically want to really trace down the edges really nicely here. So this is a tool that whatever you're going to do as a designer, you're going to have to learn how to master this tool. And so this is kind of a basic basic design skill that you'll have to master. It's kind of a tedious, but basically this is the way to do this. Um, of course, there might be other uh, ways to do this that are a little bit more accurate than what I'm doing right now, but basically this will give me quite a good result and this is usually how I would do this. All right, now once I've finished this, I need to make sure that there are no holes because here, for example, we do have a hole. So we need to make sure that we also do the little hole inside so that we don't bring in this black area as well and now basically we have we are finished now to turn this into a selection i use a shortcut which is command enter but basically i think you can go down to path here and you can see here's the path that you've been working on and you can convert it to a selection from here so now i can just copy that and let's go here and paste that now you'll notice 
that when I do this, because I wasn't like 100% accurate, we did bring in a little bit of the edges, the black edge, and it doesn't look super, super professional. That's, by the way, how you notice like a professional designer versus a non-professional designer. If you see these little edges, you know it wasn't like super professional. By the way, I want to flip the shoe around. I don't know if that's legit. So I'm just going to flip it horizontally. Um, all right, so to get rid of this, this unprofessional black kind of hairline here, I'm going to use some tricks. So I'm going to select this shoe. The fastest way to do this is with Command and click on the layer. So we have this selection. Now from the selection menu, what I can do is I can just contract that you know, contract the selection. So let's contract it with by two pixels. So now, if I'll zoom in, you'll be able to see that we're cutting down the last two pixels outside of the selection, right? We're leaving them outside. So what I'll do right now is I'll invert my selection because right now I'm selecting the shoe, right? So I can invert my selection, right, inverse, and then I can just click delete. And now I've basically deleted everything that was outside of these two pixels. And the result is, as you can see, we've basically removed these last ugly two little black pixels. And now the shoe is clean and crisp and everything looks great. All right, so we have the first step here. By the way, I'm just thinking like red on red. <clears throat> Maybe we need the background to be of a little of a different color or something. So I'm going to check the background and I'm going to click Command U, which basically opens up. We can actually do this from here. Click U saturation, basically gives you the color. You can shift the colors. Let's stick to this. Kind of gives, pops the, the shoe out. All right, by the way, you can see that I've added this as an adjustment layer. This basically means that I can trigger it on or off or change its opacity or these kind of things. So right now we have the shoe. The next thing I want to cover is shadows, right? We want to make this look realistic. And notice here we have all the shadows going on. It looks like it was really photographically, like photographed over there. I don't know, maybe it's 3D rendering. I don't know. So we want to add some shadow over here. Now, a lot of people would go here because we have kind of a filter that's called drop shadow, right? But basically what drop shadow does, if I'll make this kind of distinct, it it kind of puts a flat shadow behind it. And that, that looks sucks. That looks super unprofessional. So do not do that. That's not what we want to do. I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to try to fake how this real shadow would look like. So what I'll do is, you know, I'm going to, command and click the layer again to select its shape. And then I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to fill it out with black. So basically what we have now is we have another black shoe on top of the shoe. So I just filled this selection with black color. And let me actually bring it behind. So I've moved the layer behind the shoe. And now I'm going to transform it a little bit. So I'm going to squeeze it down to the bottom because think about this. If we had kind of a light coming from this area here, the shadow would drop kind of like this under the shoe or something like this. So this is where a real, this is what would the real shape of the shadow would look like, right? So the next thing is probably to reduce its opacity a little bit. So I'm using the numbers on the numpad on the keyboard to reduce opacity, but you can also do this from here. Um, now, to make really good shadows, the secret in good shadows is multiple layers. So first, this shadow is super sharp at the moment. We want to blur it out a little bit. Now, the most useful blur is you're going to go to Filter, and then you're going to go to Blur Gaussian Blur. That's the most popular and useful kind of blur within Photoshop. So... And then you can, you know, you see here that you can determine how blurry the shadow is going to be. So I'm going to pick something in the mid-range here. And as I said, this is going to be a game of a few layers, right? So what I am going to do is I'm going to de decrease the decrease the shadow, the opacity here. And then I'm going to create a few more 
layers of this. So I'm going to duplicate this layer, right? So I'm going to uh, do Command J, which basically duplicates this into another layer. And this one, I'm going to give it a way bigger blur than this, all right? Something like this. And no, again, I'm going to reduce its opacity. And maybe I'll just, mm, you know what? I'm not sure that this looks better. You know what? It does look better for the, you know, because where there's a big distance, there's the shadow is going to be blurry. But over here where it's really close, it's probably going to be more accurate. So what I will do is I'll take the one that's more sharp and I'm going to add a mask to it. And then I'm going to just delete here. Now masking means basically where I'm painting now over the mask with black, it's not going to be visible. So now you can see basically it's kind of like erasing it. So I have the, the accurate, the sharper shadow next to the top and here it's a little bit more blurry. So I created by using these two layers, I created a more realistic looking shadow and I think that looks good for now. All right, so we covered selection, we covered um, shadows. One more thing that um, is important sometimes is doing a little bit of cleanups, right? So sometimes you would maybe go here and you'll get an image from your client and you were like, let's say this is a little bit of dirt that we don't want this little dirt to be here because we want to clean up this image to look nice. So this here and this here, let's say we want to clean it up. So the old fashioned way to do this would be to use a tool that's called a stamp tool. So this is basically the stamp tool and the way that it works is you're basically saying I want to duplicate an area from here and put it here. So let's say I clone this area that's next to it and then I'm going to put it next to this one. And as you can see, I'm not sure why it's not cloning it. Okay. Oh, sorry, because I'm on the mask layer. I'm going to go to the shoe layer and I'm going to clone this right up here. And now basically I remove this, I erase this. And if you go back, the shoe looks much cleaner. So let's try to do this. And now there's actually a, a smarter tool where you can, I think, just select this. So I'm using this um, poly uh, lasso tool to kind of just very quickly click the dots around this. And let's see if I can use the content aware fill. Basically what this does, is it looks to the sides and it's trying to fit it um, automatically without me doing the clone. So let's click OK. Almost perfect. It has a little bit of a red bulge here. So I'm going to go and I'm going to undo that. I don't like the, the quality of this. Sometimes this works really well and sometimes it doesn't work really well. So let, let me just go ahead and try to stamp tool one more time. I'm going to select here and going to try to duplicate. Yep. So now it's gone and the shoe is much, much cleaner. So either the stamp tool will help you clean up your images or the content aware fill, whatever, which one of them works. Now, the last thing I want to touch upon is changing colors and editing colors. A lot of times that's something that you'll have to do. And I showed you the use saturation here to control the, you know, the, the, editing of the background, I can actually do the same to the shoe itself. So if I want to just edit the shoe, I might add another, let's say, U saturation. And I can actually link this by, you know, option clicking between the layer. This means that this adjustment only affects the shoe right now. So if I change this, you can see I'm changing the color of the shoe, but I'm not affecting the background. If I wouldn't do this, everything would change, the whole image would change, right? And that's not what I want in this case. I just want to affect the shoe. Now, this is easy, kind of easy, because the white stays white and only the colors are changing, right? Because changing the U um, changes the colors, but white and black are kind of like without colors, so they're not being affected. There's another way that I love to change and edit colors, and that is by using the... Uh, gradient map. So basically what gradient map does, and I'm going to again apply this only to this layer, and I'm going to reverse this. Basically what this does is it maps all the pixels. So imagine in this shoe, 
you know, we have a lot of colors of pixels. All of them are ranging from, let's say, very um, bright one, the white ones, and to the black ones. Even those with the colors, they have color but they also have kind of brightness attached to them so when you add a gradient map on top of them it just basically remaps the whole color so the light colors and then you put in a gradient so in this case all the white colors are being mapped to white and all the dark colors are being mapped to black so all the ones that were in the red are mapped somewhere in between however so it kind of looks like it. I just turned this into a black and white photo. However, I can do things like map the blacks into a dark red, right? And now that's going to give me a little bit different effect. And maybe I can turn this into a green or some kind of something like this. So now I created a totally different effect of remapping the the colors of the image. Now this this is um, useful a lot of times. In this case, I probably won't want to do this, but a lot of times, if I would go ahead, for example, to unsplash, let's bring in unsplash here, and let's say I have a photo of maybe even this woman. Let's take this woman and copy the image. Sometimes it's going to be very, um, because this image is busy and there's a lot of colors going on, if I want to put some text on top of it, it's going to be useful to create some kind of a gradient map on this image. Again, not black and white in this case, but let's reverse this. It basically reversed the gradient. And let's choose here maybe some kind of a yellow and uh, dark, maybe very dark gray blue or something like this. So when you map the colors like this, maybe even not yellow, maybe let's do this some kind of a different blue, right? So now I've mapped the colors, the whole colors from the brightest one are this blue to a darker blue. And now I can add some white text on here this is my title, right? And the title will have a really good contrast. So now it's going to be readable, right? And I can use this image with some colors on my website. Imagine without the colors, this wouldn't be readable. But right now, if I gave this this kind of color wash, this of the gradient map, I can use this image um, and put some titles on it with great contrast. So those are some of my favorite tips and tricks when I'm using photo editing and color editing um, using Photoshop. I'd love to hear from you what your favorite tricks are. And remember, this applies with any design software. You can check here to check the next video in our free web design course. Looking forward to hearing from you how you're liking this course. And of course, if you're not subscribed yet, now's the time. I'll see you in the next video.